And uh, we've seen that renewable energy companies have struggled in recent years. And how how are things going to play out for 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 the the green industry and and the green transition? Yes, I've studied and, and and spent a lot of time on wind and solar. I actually used to run a wind park myself. I was a director of managing director of a, of a wind park in Germany for three years. So my work was also in that area, and and I've spent a lot of time understanding what wind and solar does and what it doesn't do. And um, there are fundamental um, issues with um, with wind and solar which cannot be discussed away. And if you if you want to, I can run you through that that, that logic is actually is actually I've been trying to synthesize the problem, you know, to to the basics. And I've presented this on, on several occasions in Germany, in Asia, in Africa, worldwide. So if you want to, I can share that, and we can have a quick discussion around that. So basically, the, the question really is why is there a problem with wind and solar? Why there's there even a discussion around the energy transition if wind and solar were the solution? Right. I mean, if it was a solution, then why are we discussing it? Right. I mean, it's obviously better. But the fact is, from my understanding, is that wind and solar are an inferior technology. And because they're inferior, they cannot be cheap. Even though we are supposedly told they're cheap and we, we're told they're cheap because the, the, the cost metric they're using to, to evaluate how cheap they are is called levelized cost of electricity, LCOE, which does not cover the entire cost. It's like a marginal cost measure in a way. And um, the first problem actually is energy density. So energy density of wind and solar is very limited. And that's by nature given because there's only so much energy per square meter available to us from the sun or from the wind. And we have to then basically put infrastructure up to collect that energy, that so-called green renewable. Actually, it is renewable energy. It is, it is green energy. The energy that we're collecting in itself, in its source, is actually a renewable, right? And because of energy density, we have these large, you know, hundreds of square kilometers, you know, full of, of equipment we have to put in place. That's, that's one issue. For instance, here is one of the modern, modern uh, solar park in the UAE just put in place. 1.35 cents per kilowatt hour, supposedly 160,000 households being, being covered, 21 square kilometers, and reducing 2.5 million tons of CO2. Well, it's actually not correct. You see, the 1.35 is not the cost, that's the price. That's how much they price the kilowatt hour that they, they generate. But that's not the cost of the electricity to the people. And I'll explain that. Secondly, it doesn't cover 160,000 households because no household can run on solar. You need to have, you know, electricity at night and when there's a sun sandstorm and, you know, when there's something else, right? So obviously it doesn't work on its own. There's something else required. And actually the CO2 um, 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 reduction makes wrong assumptions about solar being zero CO2, which is not the case. So that's energy density is one key problem which we actually cannot change because it's given by nature. The second problem is the operational lifetime. So these so-called renewable equipments, they don't last very long. So uh, modern solar panels probably last only 12 to 15 years. I'm talking grid scale, new solar panels from China. They last 10, 12, maybe 15 years if you're lucky then they have to be replaced because they're so optimized, they're so thin to make them cheap. Um, when, you have, when you look at, at wind turbines, I mean, especially the offshore ones, you need to replace, you know, uh, the uh, power, power infrastructure every eight years and they're being repowered after 10, 12, 15 years. So in fact, there's very few large scale, grid scale wind parts that really last 20 years. It's not the case. Of course, there are wind mills which last longer. But on average, modern large scale equipment doesn't last that long. Then you have the batteries for storage. How long do they last? I don't know, 10 years? I don't know. So the whole operational lifetime is a problem because you have to replace the entire system every few years, right? You have the energy density issue. You have to build a lot. That lot you have to replace every few years. And then, of course, comes the third thing. And that's really the third basic problem. It's the intermittency. The intermittency is also something that you cannot change. It's nature-driven. So here is solar in this case, and you see, let's say, it's a demand curve. And the logic, of course, is that you would generate power during the day and then use that power at night. Right? I mean, Carson, that's a logic, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So you move it over here. So you think you overbuild two times. That's it. Done. Well, the best locations in the world have a natural capacity factor of 25%, South Africa, Australia, um, uh, California, maybe 28% if you're lucky. 
That means that on average over the year, the sun only shines 25% in a useful way because of mornings and evenings, there is sometimes rain, there is sometimes other issues. So that means you have to overbuild four times, assuming you move electricity from day to night. Well, in order to move it, you have, actually Germany, by the way, has a natural capacity of 10%. The Northern Hemisphere has 10%. China, maybe 10, 12%. The very south of the, you know, the Austria doesn't have much. And that already would mean you would have to overbuild 10 times in those, you know, very um, uh, strong energy hungry countries. And now you need some sort of storage to move it from day to night. If you use batteries, you probably have a 20% loss, energy loss. If you use hydrogen, you have up to 80% energy loss. So now in order to move electricity from day to night, you would have to now overbuild 12 times to 50 times already. But now think ahead. So far what we've done, we've just generated enough electricity on average for the year to move from day to night. But what if there's two or three or five days or 10 days of, of no sun? For 10 days storage, you would have to overbuild 100 to 500 times. And this is the problem of intermittency, which cannot easily be overcome. And, and, and that means you have to have a whole system in addition to the wind or the solar installation to make the electricity to generate usable. Right? And in fact, there's five systems to replace one coal or gas-fired power station. One, you have to have solar and wind in a drastic overbuild, which we just discussed. Second, you have to have short duration storage, mostly batteries, to overcome the short-term fluctuations and to keep the system stable. But the short duration batteries uh, uh, storage is not enough. You need long duration storage, which batteries cannot be. So you have to use hydrogen for that. So you have to have a third system, in addition to the one and two, um, for long duration storage. And then in fact, you still have to have a fourth system, usually thermal power plants, which is based on hydrogen, by the way, right? Supposedly hydrogen and power plants, now gas. It's, or today you have coal-fired power stations back up and China uses backup coal. So you have this fourth security um, uh, thermal power plants. And the fifth one is the transmission of the grids and the infrastructure. So you're replacing an existing system with five systems so-called clean. And now you understand the cost. When you see those five systems we're building up to replace one coal or gas fire power station, now you understand why it cannot be cheaper. You understand also why there are other issues that come with it. There's a huge environmental issue. There's a huge issue for, for plant life and animal life because of these large infrastructure. The raw material input. There's the energy input. You need a lot of energy to build all this infrastructure. And this is when you come to this medical energy return of investment, EROI, when you now calculate the entire energy required to build these five systems, which need to be replaced every few years, you quickly realize that the energy you get out is hardly sufficient to make up the energy you put in. So the EROI is very low. So actually you're starving the world of energy if you were to go large scale, grid scale, huge, like as we are planning, as Germany has been doing already, if you're going wind and solar, you're literally starving yourself of energy.